<laughs> and we are live. Welcome to the Sound Advice live stream and podcast. I am Justin, the uh, DIY audio guy, and here with me today we have down below me on um, his penultimate episode, Mr. Robert Hi-Fi Ve- Vega. I can't talk tonight. Robert Hi-Fi Vega, tell us what's happening. Yo, I'm I'm still doing the Shooter McGavin thing because I haven't figured any any other intro out. But yeah, that's what's going on. All Trying right. to intro. And we- and we have our other partner in crime with us, Nick from Toyd's DIY Audio. He's wearing a Red Sox hat tonight. You never can't predict what he's going to wear. And we have a special guest. We have Scott from Power Hog Audio. What's uh, up, guys? Scott, uh, as many of you know, is uh, starting off a new company and, um, and is very active in the community surrounding these car audio YouTubers. And so uh, he said, hey, I'd love to come on. And we said, we'd love to have you on. And we don't have a big plan for the night. Our plan is mostly just to talk about speakers, which is kind of what we do every night. (laughs) Yes. And to look at those beautiful beasts behind Scott at some point today, because those look just awesome. I love the different color. How many people, I mean, how many times do you see drivers nowadays that are all just black? Well, pretty much just black, all black. And maybe some silver on them, but mainly just all black. That's that's nice. I like that little contrast. So you like the uh, you like the contrast. You like the white uh, basket and everything. I do. I, do. I'm, I mean, why we not? Wanted, we just wanted something to be very neutral for a lot of people's installs. Now we kind of just threw the, the right in the pooch with the red four channel amplifiers. But as far as the speakers go, it's one thing we actually did kind of focus on. With uh, now we do have the colored stitching and stuff like that. But in, on the basket side, if someone's going to be showing that off, we wanted to be able. A lot of times people do the LED light assembly and stuff like that. So we just stuck with the white on everything, so it really just reflects nice, and they usually show off nice. Yeah, I want to. I want to see some old school black lighting on those things sometime. I'm excited. I'm doing a matte finish inside my box so we can get some cool lighting effects off the magnets and the, the baskets. Oh, yeah. See, that'd be nice. Awesome. So you're you're building a demo vehicle, is that right, Scott? You know, it's just a really another excuse to upgrade for like the twentieth time <laughs> in the last year. But yeah, so and why not just do it with that? But yeah, so I'm doing the six of our Hog Two, uh, 15 inch drivers. The it's 270 ounce motor. The uh, Dang. Sorry, 370 ounce. I apologize. It is 370. He's got three triple layer spider pack. It's a pretty big, ma- nasty subwoofer, man. The uh, the the fiberglass cone. The cool thing on that was is when we were working with it, it gave us a good acoustic properties, um, and and more musical bandwidth versus doing the, the paper cone. And mm-hmm. uh, it was lighter than doing it. And I don't mean just goes right off in the, in the deep end. And a lot of these guys, if you understand when you make speakers like that, everything's a trade off as far as if you rigidity or weight and things along those lines. So we came up with a pretty cool sub on that one. You know, thanks for saying that. If I don't mind saying, Justin, I don't think people understand not, not just building a speaker like with drivers already made, but just building a driver mm-hmm. from the ground up. There's trade-offs in, in all of it. And I think that's so important for people to understand that there's trade-offs. So appreciate you saying that. It's focused more towards loudspeakers, and it's like a loudspeaker cookbook that preaches it. And it's you can just roughly about do, and it, you lose it out the window with the subwoofer efficiency. But it's roughly ab- about three dB of efficiency gain. You you lose about an octave of, of that you can of, that you can play. So I mean, like the higher the efficiency goes, you're going to be able, you're going to lose the lower end response. Um, and that goes into the cone weight, the rigidity. Again, if it's pressed, if it's there, if it's Heat form, vacuum form, there's a bunch of things that contribute to it. It makes a big difference. And those are all trade offs. Like, do you want a, a very musical sub? And, and, I, and I'm not trying to just jump ahead in our conversation. Do you want a, a sound quality subwoofer? Does it doesn't be rigid? A lot of stuff goes to it. Yeah, definitely. Why don't we? In car audio, every, everything is a trade off, whether it's your amp, it, you're trading either efficiency for power, or, or sometimes it's efficiency for sound quality, efficiency for size. You know, you, there's just a trade everywhere you look in karate. There's a trade off. Yeah. Or if you use a cheap head unit, some, I mean, no, that a is a trade off or that yeah. CCA wire or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but the financial thing is a trade off, but you, you know, you've got to, you know, you've got to build a system and you know, you love to have something with tons of power. Well, if you're going to do that, that means you've got to go to thicker wire. You got to go to higher quality wire. All right, you need you know more alternators, that kind of stuff, and there, there's just this point where you have to say, yeah, enough's enough. I can't add extra power because I've got to find a way to make the extra power. Everything is a trade-off, and all those other things cost money. I like efficient amplifiers for that reason because you know I think audio control. Every time you amp dyno guys test an audio control amp, the efficiency numbers are usually pretty good on those. 
And so well, what does that mean? That means the average Joe doesn't need a new alternator. Right, exactly. It gets more into that even also. And, it, and I think it really attributes down to, and as people, which I was, I've been guilty of it too. You know, I've had countless installs that I've upgraded immediately afterwards. What do you want to do? What are your actual goals? And, and what is the actual music frequency bandwidth you want to play? And I think that's the same as all systems, man. The uh, you got to think about it. It's also too people were doing the 150 plus dB in the 90s and all that jazz with little to no excursion and low motor force and a ton of drivers. But I mean, you know, it was in a lot of higher frequencies. People want that 150, 160 at 20 hertz now. So I mean, that's the trade off in itself. Is you've got to get more motor force. You got to get a longer voice coil. You got to get the surround and the cone that can you know take that, and not just roll and crumble on itself. And then it's just trade offs. But the biggest thing is, is really if you're going to spend the money and do it. Do it to where you're going to take and uh, get drivers that suit your needs for, you know, all around. And that's my personal opinion. People think it differently. Also. So Thomas Marshall, thank you so much for the super chat. We always welcome the super chats. And anytime you want to dig into your pocket and, and throw one of those at us, we appreciate it. So thank you, Thomas, for that. We appreciate it. And like Thomas said, hit the like button, gang. It's called support. If you don't have five bucks to drop on us, the like button helps a whole lot. Uh, yeah. So one of the things that, I can I, want can to I, oh, go ahead, Nick. Go ahead. Yeah, two two things. First, first of all, Thomas Marshall. I just want to point him out because he's on like every time. He's not typically on my channel necessarily, but he's on every time on Sound Advice. And he, I feel like he is a good person in the community just in general. So I really appreciate Thomas. So I just wanted to say that. Uh, yeah, now the second thing he's in all the streams. I know he's he's Marshall. amazing. He's he's amazing. I I really like Thomas. Yeah. Second second thing I wanted to say is, um, or I wanted to ask actually, do you see a lot of people, Scott, going to larger subwoofers because of that? Because of the larger subwoofers, we can, you know, get a little bit more efficiency, a little bit more SPL at those, you know, those lower frequencies. I'm gonna reflect that right here to our man Hi Fi Vega, and I think he puts it better than I can put it on a regular basis. We're at a time now where power is cheap, okay, yeah. and, and you can just. The efficiency and all that stuff out the window, if you can get the battery bank to support it and the electrical support it, you can go buy a base 10K, base, you know, whatever you may be, a full bridge amplifier and get crazy watts. Now, again, that goes back to those trade offs. I, I like full bridge amps. If you want to do a crazy setup, that's awesome. But again, as we, we all know, and this translates to anything you buy, it's not just full bridge amplifiers, anything like that. When you're buying a budget based product, again, you might get an amplifier that meets its rate of power, but where are the corners cut? whether it be in vibration protection, where it's going to be, or in, in noise filtering, things along those lines, that is, it's in, going to be an end user, things going to change your outcome of your setup. It can be the difference between you hooking up an amplifier and having a wine at idle or when you crank the car or, you know, it not having that at all, which I prefer not to have that. Now, if I wanted to go crazy, but the, yeah, and, and I'm not just trying to sidetrack off the thing there, but yeah, we live in a time where power is cheap. So you can either take and uh, there's two ways they want to go about it. You know, you can either buy a Korean or a Brazilian board and you'll have, I'm sorry, I misspoke on the boards, but you can buy something that's not full bridge and have less power for more money, or you can do the, the full bridge design, generally speaking, with the Tarrams and, and other brands and have more, but it's a trade off, just like anything else. But yeah, you'll see a lot of people are buying big subs because they can go out and get these amplifiers on the cheaper price tag. It's not, you know, crazy thousands of dollars to have, you know, five to 10,000 watts anymore. Now, um, is that something that you guys are doing at Power Hire? What, what size subs do you offer right now? Uh, right now we have 15s. I have 10s, 12s that are on their way, and then uh, I have 18s in prototype. And then also we've got six and a halfs and eights that are um, uh, Predator Neo is going to be our mid base. And then uh -huh. we also have eight, 10, 12, 15 full range drivers in the in the in the prototype also. And that's to really to cater more to the loud pack guys. And there's a lot of things that I've been seeing, you know. And I have business partners, and we do a lot of uh, open things, the community and car shows. And that's one thing I was closed minded on at first is the way that I go about my installs and the things I like versus what other people like. I'm around a lot of people that do all of their doors. You don't even see out the windows and set up the driver doors and they've got speakers all the way up or <laughs> opening up the back. And then I noticed and one thing I really want to focus on is getting these guys. The reason I want to do those big full range drivers was that you, a lot of times you'll see guys that are having these large, full, you know, mid base drivers or PACI drivers and they're playing them in the completely wrong frequency range that they're supposed to be designed to be played in. So I'm thinking hopefully we can try to make uh, some of these loud pack guys sound better by uh, offering a really nice full range driver that they can just do minimal EQing to and go at it. Yeah, so take what all range should those away. drivers be built in? Sir? Be played in. Sorry. I'm sorry. Rob and I cut you to the Rob. Go ahead, Rob. I was just going to say, you, every time you install those mid-range, take out their uh, horn and bullet tweeters. when you Please. 
Yeah, I can't. The thing is, though, you know, we have to make those two. There's people that cater to, and there's things that I, I'm, I'm not opposed to them anymore. Like, uh, for instance, me personally, I'll use a silk dome or something close that's a really high end material tweeter that I like the sound of, obviously. But I, I prefer a silk dome, and and I just always have. I, and my first set of tweeters are some ADS silk dome tweeters, and I think that really just left a impression on me on those. Hmm. But um, you know, for instance, I'm going to do a, a, a stereo setup in my barn doors and the excursion in the with the wall now that I open it up and there's speakers and all that. I'm putting bullet tweeters in it, bro, because I'm just broadcasting them bad boys. Do I want to sit there in my driver doors and have it shave my face for me? No, I'm good. Not my thing. <laughs> Justin, what were you going to ask? What, what frequency range to the full range drivers? So, so yeah, the, so what you're talking about is you know a big subwoofers in a big band pass enclosure. And then some full range drivers in the doors, large four range drivers in the doors. What frequency should those be playing? It, it really depends on the size of the driver. Again, you know, they have different frequency response ratings. But for instance, the 12 or the 15, I think is rated like 44 hertz to 20,000 hertz. The, uh, now, you can't just go set your crossovers like you gentlemen are aware. That's why you have to go in more depth with that people because they know they'll set it 40 hertz, you know, 6 dB octave. You're like, no, you can't really do that. But, That's uh, a Two-way is it? Is it like a coax? Is it it'll be, be like, like a large coax? So yeah, it'll have a horn built in the middle of a of a, of a, a driver. Will it be like a compression driver in there? Or what's it going to be? A, comp a compression horn driver. Yes. Yeah. I'll send you some. I'll send you some uh, little teaser photos of it if you want to. Mm. The, uh, Definitely. Yeah, because I have to, I have to blow up somebody else's inbox and stuff other than high fives. I'm just like, bing, bing, check this out. <laughs> gotta be, you know? <laughs> you got to be careful about that with the teaser stuff one thing that we've all learned is that uh, it's really easy especially here on our show to get to talk and say oh yeah here's the thing i got coming up next and then something happens and you never fine. get around to it or yeah. it, you know the you know the filming goes wrong the project ends up bad and you just you need to chunk it and people will come on and ask hey where's the thing you were going to do yeah there's a happen? lot of things i was going to do that are still on the list that i might not get to so like grow go. hair <laughs> that's been off the list for a long long time Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'll be there one day. The bad part is, is if I just didn't look so goofy looking, probably I'd just be shaving it already, man. Like I already hate dealing with it. Scott, now I have probably the most important question that is going to be asked of you at the show. So I hope you don't ruin it. But mm -hmm. what is that awesome hat that you have on top of your uh, computer case? I like that with the leather on it. Snap on tools. Oh, that's your snap on tools hat. It's dirty though. Well, that's because you work with snap day, on yeah. tools. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, uh, yeah. Obviously, I think sense. a lot of guys are aware of my day job. I have a snap on franchise. The uh, And I've been doing that for about seven years. And now we're kicking off this venture, which has been a blessing in itself and a whole lot of other work. And But I mean, I honestly have been happier since I've been doing this. I found it like literally, there's a weird switch one day where I went from like uh, waking up and thinking about my snap on franchise or thinking about customers or things that had to do with that. And then one day it was like, power hog like it was just a totally different i wasn't stressed about that stuff i was thinking about like cool stuff i want to do with speakers or some kind of like advertisement i want to do or something and it was, it was pretty cool yeah man it, it's good to be uh do your passion projects as a real job it's it's nice especially when you already have something that you have set up it's established it's going so you're not so worried about your day-to-day -day bills as much oh for sure and, and you could spend a little time on there I mean, they overlap each other a lot, though. And a, a lot of people don't. Re I mean, it's a lot of work. I mean, I've expressed to a lot of people like, hey, I do the snap on thing all day. And then I leave Marietta and go tomorrow to that other warehouse. And that's a whole another day's work almost. And that's doing both at the same time during the day, too. But I'm, I'm getting to where I'm about to be stepping back some from the snap on franchise and give myself a couple of days during the week and have my assistant run the truck. And then we're going to slowly start transitioning to um, moving a smaller role with my other franchise and going just straight up all the time. Pound hog, which is, I'm looking forward to. Yeah. And, you know, some people might not know, but this is this going to be like one of the first systems in recent times that you have not run Rockford Fosgate amps. People you know, don't know that you're a legendary Rockford Fosgate nerd collector. Yeah. I mean, I spent t tens of thousands of dollars almost to have way less watts than I could have ever imagined. But no, the <laughs> the. Uh, and, and the funny part is, ask Casey. I was actually looking for my smartphone, my smart, my smart watch charger earlier, and there was a Rockford power base knob in the kitchen drawer. I'm like, what is this doing in here now? Like, I could have sold out the last amp, dang it! But the uh, I'm a sucker for them still, and all I'm collecting them more again. But I was at a position with the with the T. Yeah, it's from the, we're based right outside Atlanta, Georgia. But uh, I outgrew the T amps, man. I really love those T amps. I really love them. But, I mean, I really did make it to a point to where I actually outgrew them. You know what I mean? Because unless I want to be stacking, you know, I can't drop two grand on a T4000 at 4,000 watts. You know what I mean? Like, uh, 
Not there, oh, you bro. Get the Fifteen uh, T T K. I had them. I had them all. Oh, the T fifteen K. Yeah, T fifteen K. There you go. I've never even seen one of those for sale, actually. And you know, oh, half of it's really a cap bank. I mean, the bottom half is a big cap bank in it. Yeah, but uh, I don't. I know Tony, but I don't know him that well. I've never seen one in person, so I saw one at the Rockford Wall. Like the, you know, I grew up as a kid of all that, and, and I'm like trying to go there. You know, I grew up in my dad's shop. His uh, good friend John Ross, and uh, that's where I'm gonna start another pod. John Ross and my dad Chris, they had a shop in Rolling Thunder, and uh, I saw my first pair of boobies at Nopi Nationals in like the mid '90s. They <laughs> had a bikini contest, man. I was like five, and I was like, "Oh my gosh!" Yeah, <laughs> but the uh, yeah, so I grew up in that, and then uh, my dad was a Atlanta Rockford bred from like '96 to like '07, like early or mid '06, right when the T stuff came out, and that was what really sparked off my thing. With it. We had waffle and stuff like that before, but. The I remember just when that T series stuff came out and it was just the best you know at the time I was like there's nothing else that compares to this and uh, I just keep buying them every time one pops up it's it's mine. Didn't your dad write for some magazines? Cardio magazine, yeah. Uh, Yeah. He did a it was only a small a couple small articles. The biggest one he did that got published was the Emerson AMC squared subwoofer, which is like an Emerson subwoofer. It's nothing crazy like that, but it's still really cool. It's really cool to see. But and I was talking to him and it was it. He's like, it's a different era then, you know, like and we've, you've had the conversation with, with, with big D, like uh, you can't just bite the hand that feeds there, you know, okay. He had a Zapco way. He, I had the conversation with him. He's like, man, he's like, I was beating the snot out of these Emerson subs and they were just hit an Acura legend. That was his like demo vehicle at the time for the, for the, for the cardio stuff. And uh, he's like, I didn't like these subs. There's like, there's like three songs they played good on, but I mean, like you can't just bite the hand that feeds and be like, Hey, this mm. is a crap subwoofer. It's Emerson's pushing out, you know, but uh, it's a, it's a wild, wild west then, man. Like uh, you either take the money or you don't get to review their product ever again. So I mean, which one do you want to do? Yeah, for sure. I'm sure Zapco is never going to send me anything again because back in I'm I know Justin probably knows Zapco has always been legendary, right? Mm-hmm. Well, I've tested old Zapco amps, the C2Ks, which everybody loved. I've tested uh, newer Zapco amps, the STK6 SQ, and it turns out, fellas, I really don't like Zapco amps, and I don't think they sound that good. Um, it depends a on lot the of people, A lot of people don't like that, but hey, it is what it is. You know, you know, amps disappointed me that I didn't like the sound of after I cherished and, and waited to get so long to get one. Which one? PPI art. Oh, dude. I, hey, let me. Down. I've also said that same thing about PPI. I feel the same way. I don't. I let don't me down. I was like, this is scratchy. It wasn't even the pots. So like this just didn't sound right. I was like, yeah. maybe the amps bad. It wasn't. Hey, preach it, man. I've been telling. Plus, they they hardly ever do rated. Well, there's things I have to be abstract on it too, though, because I feel like now, I mean, I could be completely wrong and still glory or real. And you know, we're doing way higher pre, but it's not depends on what kind of cable you're doing it to them. You know, they're not doing five volt pre out into an RCA into them and stuff like that at the time. Yeah. So I mean, what is between the hog, the hog one? Oh, you got them backwards. Okay, hog one and hog two, El Fuego. And I saw uh, your custom, your deviant. I know what's up. I like the beardy. My sister has like four bearded dragons. The hog one and the hog two. It's really about you know how reality. I, I can just I'll just grab them. I'll just grab them. The hog <laughs> one has like about half the size of the motor almost of the uh, hog two. Um, I don't even have to have the earphones in. Hog one's got a pressed paper cone. It's still a high roll surround. It's still stitched, double stitch, all that jazz. It's really nice. Um, it's a double. Double stacked. Uh, I'm, I'm over here. The webcam is over here, knucklehead. The uh, we can see. Still nice yeah, we can see it just fine. Same basket as a hog too. Oh, he can't hear us. Double pack spider, and he got some good <laughs> he some headphones in. Very nice sub. You got nice tinsel leaves. They're double stacked. Everything's super nice. Great sub. It's a 170 ounce motor on this guy, and the other one's 370. The uh, the hog too, which I can't hold this a bit long. It's significantly heavier. But yeah, you go up to the fiberglass cone. That's what I was speaking about before. Um, the the rib guy here, it's pretty neat to look at. It's got a cool texture to it, but we use that for the acoustic properties, and it let us keep the efficiency we wanted and get down low and get the carbon fiber dust cap on her. Um, you'll see immediately you get way more tensile lead on these guys. Um, you've also got a lot more, yeah. lot more motor assembly down here that goes hand in hand. Now it's hard to get into in the view here. This is a lot taller of a motor assembly than the Hog One is. The uh, boy coil is longer. If you see this sub, it goes way more in. The uh, the voice coil has a lot more height. I forget the exact measurement on the top of my head. That goes back into what we're talking about, the things to look for. You know, the 
more motor force goes hand in hand with the, you can use a heavier duty coil that's thicker and, and has more length to it. And then it'll change the subwoofer around. But cool, I hope that was a good answer. And it's about it's about double the power um, of a driver also. But most of, all the specs are on the Power Ride website. We, and I posted the uh, broken in FS from a dance on them. I already got winded picking up the hog too over there. But uh, <laughs> they're all on the website right now with all the TS. All right, guys, stop talking about Scott. He can hear us again. Yeah. And the uh, <laughs> the thing about the carbon fiber that people don't get is it's a stiffer material. It's lighter. So that helps with the moving mass. And, and having the double the motor is significant. So and, while – oh, go ahead, Scott. I didn't mean to cut you off. Just touching base back on the carbon fiber cone. It legitimately does. Now, if you think about – Think about taking going into the gas station and getting one of those throwaway disposable oil funnel deals, right? You've probably seen those. But I don't know if the gas stations still have them anymore. Now, take and uh, if you put a, a soft piece of paper in there, like a tissue paper, to clog that up or just over the hole, you can still crumple that thing pretty strong. But if you take like a, anything that's the strong and rigid, it's going to add. It's going to give some rigidity to that cone. Just the same concept as a the speaker there, like. Uh, that speaker with all that motor force going up, it's tr it's trying to distort and wrinkle that cone, or and a lot of things it tries to does, and that th the way that's the whole reason the dust cap is round out like that anyway is because it, it the way it actually disperses flex and for the circle it's pretty neat. There's a lot of that's the reason they're round today. Is it's, it's a lot of a lot of cool science to it. Any amps got 25 to hertz? We have a lot of amps, but they're uh, demands higher than we can keep up with right now. I got some 4Ks. And I got one 7500 left. And one guy says he's buying a 75. Hasn't yet, but there's like. 100 amps coming, right. something like that. Scott, I got to ask you the question about the 7500 because this is the question I was going to ask you anyway. So I was mm -hmm. looking at the Razorback 7500.1. It's about $1,200. And there's a picture with a cat on it. Whose cat is it? Bruce Wayne. Is that's that Bruce it, Wayne? That's, his name's Bruce Wayne. Oh. But uh, you know, it's kind of funny that picture. I just I end up taking it and liking it. I don't know if you, uh, some of you guys are first, or high on my saw. I got hit on my birthday, which is kind of a crappy thing that happened. And a good friend of mine is at the body shop, and he's like, hey, man, just drop it by. You know, we'll get it fixed up. It was really nice, and it, I kind of pulled one on him because I had a bunch of other dings and scratches and places all around the truck. I'm like, hey, while well, we're here, you know, how much to <laughs> fix this other stuff, you know? And uh, so we were uh, buffing and detailing the truck after we got it done, and I had the amps. It was in the truck the whole time that I had at the body shop. And I had them laid out, and uh, Bruce Wayne decided he liked them. So I just thing, and in all reality, that's probably – I think it's like the second the most popular post on the Powerhawk Facebook page. I guess it's just because the cat's on it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Everyone everyone likes it. People love cats. Yeah. You like the excursion, too, for some reason. Yeah, they're hot right now. Dude, <laughs> I don't know, that thing's a turd. No, it's not that bad. No, I bought it and it was cheap, <laughs> but they're going up in value, man. Everywhere I go yeah. now, people are like, oh, man, the excursion. I'm like, it's a $4,000 truck. I sold a Bronco to get that. Yeah, oh now, man, you sold the Bronco. Oh. I Dude, I did myself to curious see that see that wall in there. All right, so check it. So I had a 93 OJ Bronco. I had the same one. I had the same, one. I had the same it was white white with blue and leather interior. Mine was a Eddie Bauer with uh, mm -hmm. forest green with tan. Oh, and uh true. so and I had about four grand into it, and uh, I'm like, hey, I'm gonna sell it. I got 45. I was like Psh. I'm doing good. It was like two months later, the new Bronco thing dropped <laughs> and it was like the price just, it was like double or triple that. But what are you going to do? It yeah. happens. Not much. The Broncos are beasts though. They were fun. That was actually oh, the, got, the first vehicle questions. that I had, that I had a sound system in. Uh Oh, did Justin, you still there? So I'm am I the fine. only one who's buffering? I'm getting a lot of buffering tonight. I think it is you. You said you had yeah, a question. Yeah, one I've noticed. Is, is yeah, your son downloading porn right We got some connectivity right problems. Now. Oh, it's on my end, I think. It is yeah. on your end. Yep. Yeah. Which stinks because he's the one, you know. Has yeah, we, we've got some connectivity issues here. Uh-oh. <laughs> Tell him get off. Shut down LimeWire. Cut it off. It seems fine now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. It's on his oh, end. No. I don't think he is. He can hear us. Uh -oh. He's not working. Oh, there he goes. Anyway, oh, God, back Justin back with the host is the most. Are you back, Justin? So, sorry about that, guys. I'm having some some connectivity issues on my end over here. Um, I got a little notification on the screen that said your internet connection is crap, man. You're you know we're kicking you out of here. Oh, no. um, I was going to ask a question. Uh, Flexin 500 just threw this question up here, and it's something that I kind of wanted to 
to kind of dig in a little bit because we've got someone who's had to go and figure all this stuff out. Uh, the, the question, lower MMS results in higher FS, though, uh, doesn't it? Uh, well, first of all, I know what FS is, and I think I know what MMS is, but I don't know 100%. So MMS has to do with the mass, uh, the moving mass. Is that correct? It is the moving mass. Uh, yeah. And, well, I'm not an, an exact expert on being able to tell you how. If you change this, it's going to translate into this. You know, we, I do have audio engineers that think along those lines that we take and change these parts with. But... I cannot, I'm not, I'm not trying to ramble on with that. I don't know enough about it to tell you that if you change this part or if, how they could coincide with each other, because there's so many different aspects of that, whether it be the speaker size, the material that they're going out of it, that it can change the, the, the acoustic properties and the dampening properties of a speaker and change an FS. With the, and just being with the weight of the, the spider assembly even can change it. Um, again, that's, that's not a question of my expertise on that one, though. Yeah, it's, it's a complete system. So just the one factor of, of the moving mass is not going to, it may raise it slightly, but it's a matter of all the parts working together that are going to really change it. That's way better than I could put it. Yeah. Like I said, you, and it, it gets even into things of it, even in the, in the, in the measurements of it. It's sometimes a lot, are they measuring it in an enclosure? Is it free air? Has it been broken in? There's a lot of stuff that can change with those things or, or how you want to use that measurement. Um, we let the dads do his thing. But I'm not, and that's one thing it gets into too. When it comes into designing things, I'm not an enclosure in you know, a specialist. I, I, I still let you know, I still have people that build enclosures for me. I'm not some, I'm not a wizard with taking, and I can plot things in a WinSD. I can do SketchUp things along those lines. But more times than not, I'm going to pay a professional to make me an enclosure. Yeah, and and honestly, I, I don't think. I, first of all, I don't think that's a bad idea for anyone that that is not adept at doing that in general. Just a generality, but in general most people that even build and design, I mean, you have other people that understand that terminology and understand the engineering that goes behind it. Not everyone that does that understands complete all the engineering of the MMS, the FS, the QMS, the QTS. I mean, you know, you know what to look for, you know what not to look for, uh, you know what you're going for, things like that. But uh, knowing exactly how, like Hi-Fi Vegas says, one is going to affect just everything. Justin decided to leave. He just doesn't like us. And the truth of the matter is we can't highlight any of your discussion or anything because justin does all yeah, of just, that <laughs> so <laughs> we, you guys are just stuck in the background right with our words like but going it. back to it and if we'll kill, he's probably restarting his wi-fi or anything like that yeah. but I, I recommend picking up the last speaker last speaker cookbook yeah it's like uh um you know and that's one thing too that's the thing i love and i'm so passionate about cardio i've been over you know and all of you guys have been longer a lot longer than i have and but you know even in my decades plus time i'm still learning stuff all the time and, and it, I'm just trying to expand that knowledge and, and things out. You, I'm always learning something with tuning. I'm always learning something with the with the way the electronics work. And, and that's one thing I just dive into. And a lot of it's just part of being a DIY guy, I guess. It, 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 but uh, is getting into them. Um, once you're a DIY guy, I just want to learn how everything works and how it works and makes sure. it better. I'm pretty sure the same same hackers that got the pipeline got Justin right now. Right. That's what happened? You know? He caught somebody siphoning his gas out of his car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he ran off. You know, talking about this, having someone design your enclosure, I do that. I, I can figure it out for myself. I don't do it for, I often don't even do it for myself. But I always recommend there's people that do this all the time. Mark from Cardio Fab, you know, Drew uh, from Basaholic does them a lot. And when they do stuff like that all the time, they're very, very good at it. It's probably the best 40 to 100 bucks you'll spend on your enclosure because not only are you going to get a well thought out design, a lot of times they're going to try to help you with your system, like in your car. How's it going to work in your car? How's it going to work in your system? And you get a complete cut sheet, diagram, everything. And it's well, well worth it. If you're thinking about building your own enclosure and it's you're pretty new at it, definitely. You know, yeah. pay someone reputable for a design. And and there's things that people need. And this is the other thing, because a lot of people will just pick a tuning frequency and size that they want and be done with it. But when you do that, there's things that you don't take in, uh, into account. Right. So things you don't take into account, the excursion of the subwoofer. What's what's this doing to the subwoofer? Can it actually handle the power I want to give it? Am I getting the frequency response I want? And another thing that a lot of people don't pay attention to as well 
is uh, first port resonance. So if you're, I'm assuming a ported sub in this case. If you're porting a sub, you can get first port resonance. And a lot of people want to tune a sub really, really low without taking that into effect. And you'll get a lot of resonance out of that port if you don't pay attention to it and you tune it too low. For sure. You know, I, I want to say real quick, get some gaming. He won the chat right now. He said, DI Wi-Fi guy. <laughs> DIY <laughs> Wi-Fi guy. Oh, we can highlight it now. <laughs> Justin, you're back. Welcome back. I, I hope I'm back. I don't I don't know what uh, more than likely one of the many other people who live in my house has been uh, jumping on the Internet and doing something intense with it. So who, who knows? Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if my oldest is downstairs gaming and my youngest is streaming right. something and my wife is watching TV while she folds laundry. So it's all eh, it's part of it. I'm actually very borrowing your Wi-Fi activity. as well. Is, is that a problem? <laughs> yeah, I got logged in right now. Yeah. But yeah, going back to oh, oh, so, I'm sorry, I fine. Go ahead. No, go oh, ahead. I was on the trade off. I'm not a trade off. Yeah, going back on the trade offs. But no, the uh, going back on letting professionals do it. For instance, you know, I just had my seeds. I'm not just trying to brag about it, but for instance, the poultry lady was asking me 50 billion questions. You know, how do you want to do this stitch on this? What do you want to do on that? I'm like, ma'am. I was like, you do this for a living. Like, you know what was going to look better? Than this I like this color here. And like you come up with something and, you know, show it to me before we do the green light. And, uh, you know, you'll come up with something way better than I do. And the same thing with the enclosure. Mm -hmm. You know what I the same thing. And I told uh, HiFi here the same thing. The You know, I was doing like a Shopify website for PowerHog. And a great friend of mine and, and I completely brain farted that he did a website design page was uh, he saw my Shopify. He's like, no, bro, we're not doing that. He's like, <laughs> you're going to make you a really nice website. Just give me your money. And I'm like. Just have at it, man. You know, like because you do something way better than I come up with. Because a professional, so it, it's just not just the speaker box thing. And a lot of these guys get into the whole DIY thing, like, oh, I got to do everything. Like, dude, that guy that makes boxes every single day and, and is in passionate about it and is doing his thing is going to be a way nicer, and probably better sounding enclosure than you come up with. It'd be like me. Or, I mean, I could probably come up with a cool sub box, but if we're talking about doing some home cabinets, Nick or Justin here are going to just walk laps around me. You know what I mean? As far as designing a home enclosure. I might run. I don't. I don't walk. Touche. Well. Yeah, he's. Gonna <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, I, dude. You'll be I done. It seems day. like you're gonna make a boombox, so Rob's gonna be the one to go to to get your boombox, man. We gotta find out where he got his stickers from. Still, we don't even know. Right, we'll come to find so out. Now. The secret was it was actually held together with stickers. If you didn't know, he actually didn't use one <laughs> yeah. screw in that whole no, box. No he didn't use glue, yeah. screws, or dude. anything. No nails, nothing. Yeah, so we held it together with stickers, and he went over the heat gun, and then it was fine. <laughs> yeah, and I left quite a. So I don't know. Have you ever ordered a sticker pack? You know, this is a total yeah. subject, but have you ever ordered a sticker pack? No. There no. are some very risque uh, stickers that are sent to you. <laughs> <laughs> and as I was going to put them on, I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Not my wife way. was telling me, I was like, no, no, we can't. I was like, we can't put that. This is for Parks Express. <laughs> we, can't, we can't have the uh, the so, boobies on. The so what you're saying on, is on you've got a whole bunch of dirty stickers hanging around there in your office. Yes. <laughs> yes that's exactly yes, what that's I'm exactly. saying. If anybody wants to wow. holler at your boy. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I want to mention this too, because we are talking about like, DIYing other things. One of the things that Scott DIYs, as you can see in the background, is his computer. Now, mm -hmm. I do the same thing. Rob, do you guys, Justin and you, do you guys build your own computers or no? I, I've never built my own, but I'd like to someday. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a Mac guy. You guys just go ahead and make fun of me. Go it's ahead. No. Start. I got a Mac mini right now. No, it's it's fine. No one has to make fun of you. It automatically happens. It just yeah. happens. Well, <laughs> I, do it it's I do it myself. To, you know, I, I it's a little shield, so I just make fun of myself. And then now, I, now, what are you? Run, you're running two graphics cards there. It's completely used to even have two in there right now because it's like literally nothing I play. No new game supported. If I want to play some five year old, six year old, ten year old game, sure. Yeah, right. uh, it's an i7 7700K with uh, two RX 580s and Crossfire, which is not even supported anymore. <laughs> But that's how I, I built the rig and it was supported, so I just left them in there. I could throw that in a cool living room rig now if I wanted to. But uh, yeah, just old, old reliable there. I just need to pop a new GPU in and once the whole shortage I, uh, on the jazz over. I know, and that's, I new, and that's I, the same thing. I'm waiting for the shortage to go over. I was, I actually thought about it the other day. I was like, oh man, I need, I should just buy a new GPU because I'm running an old, I think 1070. Um, and it's I'm still like, hard well, though. That's it is a good card, but I'm like, I, I should go, I should get a new card. And I'm like, I'm gonna go ahead and run up a new card. And I went up and looked at them, and they're like twelve hundred dollars for like one that's not even as good as the one I have. And I'm like, what the heck? That's what I was saying before up. show. Yeah, what what I paid for these in 2017, right for the money craze, like I can like quadruple my money now, but I can't replace it for what I can get out of them. Yeah, it's just not worth it. Yeah. 
it's like buying a house, right? You know, house values are shooting up in the part of the world that I'm in. But so what? If I sell my house, I got some, I got to have some place live? to live. <laughs> Where are live? I can't find anything else with the garage the size I've got for what I what I could get for this thing. I mean, yeah. Well, I mean, when the neighbors rat you out uh, for working on subwoofers all the time, then then you'll have to move, and, and it won't be a choice. Yeah, it'll yeah. happen eventually. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. We don't base at home here, there. but dude, as yeah. people show up and they base, and it's like, dude, please stop. Wait, yes. wait in my neighborhood. Don't yeah. be that. Like, mm. don't be that guy. Yeah. If you're in the base tech community, go to a place where you know you can do this stuff. Don't be the guy that's like the kids are trying to sleep at 12 a.m. Um, and you're yeah. just full tilt, you know. Based My dad around. raised me, no churches, no schools, no neighborhoods. He's like, if you're around yeah. those three, lock her down. The uh, And I just try to stay with that one. Now, I'm guilty sometimes of while I'm going yeah. on the road, but I try to be mindful, especially in the evenings, though, for sure. Yeah. Well, and, and you know, it's like once you tell somebody you're into speakers, specifically car speakers, they have an image in their mind of what you are. And it's like, well, uh, I mean, it's hard to get past that. They don't understand like, oh, well, actually, I'm kind of into sound quality or whatever. Or, sure. You know, they just like, oh, so what you vape and you probably don't have a job and you, you know, you grew up in this. <laughs> you just never grew up something. <laughs> I put 615s in my truck to listen to Joe Rogan podcast on the way to work every morning. <laughs> yeah. and the, and the, right. Right. That's exactly how it goes. I, you know, it's interesting because I, 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 you know, my my stuff isn't that loud. I, I don't have stuff that you can hear, you know, from two blocks away. And you know, even when I've cranked mine up as loud as possible and get out of the vehicle, it's not not terribly loud outside the truck. And I like it that way because in the truck, I'm happy with the way it sounds. And you know, sound quality is great and getting loud is great. But for me, the fun part is the challenge of how am I going to get this door apart when I've had no training whatsoever on getting doors apart, how am I going to get this thing apart and get that speaker in there and make it work and sound halfway decent? And that's the part I like because it's a, it's a challenge. It's a, it's a fun thing that, uh, that I can do just out in the garage. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Sure. So, tiny well, and secret, that's, I'm not that's, either, and so. you know, we, we were talking about DIY enclosures earlier and I want to get back to that real quick. Cause I do want to say that, you know, I think it's, it's worth, building your own enclosure you know we, we talk about get like if obviously if you're wanting to enter a competition you know at, hire someone you know something like that if but if you really want to learn just build some i mean it's not like woods at an all-time high or anything but <laughs> you know just just build it and learn from it because you're gonna learn when you build something wrong trust me you'll learn and you'll know hopefully if you're mindful of it you'll know that it doesn't sound good now there's some people that are narcissistic that just think it sounds good no matter what you know, if you're that person, then maybe, you know, once again, get it built by someone else. But if you're if you're mindful and you can say this really doesn't sound as good as I thought it would get on a forum, something like that. You get on my forum, get on you know DIY audio. There's a bunch of 12 volt ones. You get on any of these types of forums and just talk to people about what do you think is going on with my box? It doesn't sound right. And plenty you know, of the community will will help you out. And when I go reflect back on not making it on the box too, and, and you know, I'm a, I'm very very good carpenter. It wasn't the thing as, and I, when I say make my own box too, I mean for instance, like my I built my last 415 box in the no wall setup, but that was a base hall design. Like you pretty much get the cut sheet just about. You know what I mean? Yeah. But uh, and that's when I want someone to come in the chat. I just want to refer back on that one. But uh, I love the carpentry part of it. Yeah, it is easy. But as far as like for instance, my fourth order wall. You know, there's so much math that goes in the, in the ratios and things along those lines, the port area and all that. Like, dude, I'm not an expert with that. This guy does it every day. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, plus, I'm not going to get in SketchUp like Justin and draw something really cool looking. I, I just, need it. I've got a notepad here and I draw it out in pencil <laughs> or pen and call it a day. And <laughs> when, when you pay for boxes and you get something nice like that, you get a sheet with papers and sizes and how, and you got sheet optimization of your wood which is a huge benefit. If you're not doing that, I mean, you're, you're throwing money away. Yeah, it is. And, and I was obviously joking about wood. I mean, wood is insanely expensive nowadays, but uh, we all still need it. So yeah, yeah everybody you know, in the, the chat was talking about it. Is that is so in my neighborhood, the sanded ply that I typically use, which is like 30 bucks a sheet when I'd get it 32, maybe. Yeah. Like it's a couple like, months ago. It's like 55 to 60 now, but I can still buy birch for 60 bucks. 
Yeah, like, like why would ply. anybody buy the sand and ply anymore? Like, just give me the birch. You're talking about like a, a birch ply, like at a, a yeah. big box store, like a Home Depot or Lowe's or something right. like that. Yeah, yeah, hmm. yeah. Not like marine grade birch, which which sells no. typically in no, five. No, not like Ru- like Russian birch. You know the the yeah. thirteen ply, the super high dollar stuff. No. I got lucky. I was under a thousand bucks in material in my, in my wall, and I got and I got really nice, really nice one inch birch. Almost it's almost a box of one inch birch. Uh, we used some MDF in the roof and things along those lines where it was painless. You're not seeing everything, but yeah, mostly birch. Yeah, I'm gonna those, be honest. Those, my nice. my wife and I, I'm I'm gonna probably assume Justin's as well would probably kill us if we spent a thousand dollars on a one syllable for box, even if it's for like four of them or whatever. <laughs> I made it this far. I have a dog. You know, I was thinking, yeah. So it's you know thirty, no, you know, disposable income. You yeah. know, lady friends of the evening, not married. Yeah, yeah. So you don't have to worry about that. that well, yeah, no this wonder. Why, now we get it. Now we get it's it. It's the whole reason I do YouTube because I could waste that money on anything I want to waste it on. So all the YouTube money, like I see a, a stroker, I'm like, I'm gonna buy it. If it's for YouTube, done with it's it, a write off. It's, it's you know high five. It is a write off. Yep. Yeah, yeah. You're using that for your for your business. Yeah, for sure. Have you played it yet? I mean, I dude, have you even sent power to it yet? Yeah, yeah. I I, I just made sure everything was cool, and uh, I'm probably gonna throw it in a box if I ever build a box. Actually, that, I might just pay someone to build me a box. That yeah, vote, I got a really good guy local, so that Stroker 15 on the Power T and or two was like literally the most musical setup I ever had in that Corvette. It was literally amazing. And that's so woofer got down in like the low third. The box is tuned at 34 hertz. And like I was playing 20. Now you lose a lot of a third authority on the, on the sort because it doesn't have the the excursion. They do the super yeah. low notes. But I was, oh my, my dogs are barking. They're, they're playing. The box. <laughs> the, I said it was going to happen before the stream started like because they, they just get crazy. But uh, yeah, the, 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 the stroker is crazingly impressed me. But the thing that's sad about them is just like any old school speaker you buy now, it's going to need a recone if not shortly after using it. Oh, yeah, for sure. Mine the luckily, I, luckily I've, I've got a source for them now. So. Well, and I, I gotta say, that's that's one thing that was cool about your website is you actually sell recone kits for your subwoofers on Powerhog Audio, right? Yeah, stop throwing your subwoofers in the trash can, man. You know, like even our entry level one has a drop in recone kit. You know, would I like to sell you a bigger subwoofer? Yes, but I mean, <laughs> like at the end of the day, though, if you have your stuff die, you know, when you're spending, and that's one thing I really wanted to take and. Uh, Make sure that we do even our full range drivers and our mid base. I don't know if the six and a half is going to be off and off a recon, but the eights will be able. The uh, I believe it can be with, with port tuning. Mine was the uh, the uh, or the motor Tricone in that one, Big D. But uh, I don't know. I already got sidetracked in the ramble there, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I found that to be exciting because there's not very. I mean, you typically have to hope that someone you know, a second hand is, is selling one or something, or you can find one by a, a, a reliable source that has a recone kit for your subwoofer, but it's typically never from the manufacturer. Oh, recones. Yeah. The, I just wanted to make sure that we have an emphasis on it as well. When we go back to when we did the 12 V talk, we wanted to last a while, man. Like, you know, I want to see somebody, you know, having recone kits for their hog one, 10, 15 years from now or something like that popping up or something crazy like that. Like the, uh, Keep them on the road, dude. You know, a lot that even that two hundred dollar price range, and the most of those subs, you if you cook one, it's a paperweight, bro. Good luck getting that thing warrantied. So I mean, and it eliminates the warranty hassle. Okay, cool. Most of these customers are confident enough to buy a recone, or and they know someone that could probably recone it. Why are we dealing with shipping both ways? Just about by the time I shipped your forty pound subwoofer each way, you know, I could you pretty much pay for the cost of the recone kit, dude. So I mean, it's almost. It seems like it would almost be worth it for someone in, especially in an SPL competition, just to have someone on hand. Yeah, that it's a big benefit in SPL because let me go push these dogs. Right. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. What were you saying though? In, in SPL, it's it's a big benefit because you know you're really pushing all your equipment to the extreme, and a lot of times you'll have extra amps. And uh, if you got a recone, you blow a sub, hey, swap it out real quick, fix it, put it, rock it. You know, it, those you couldn't really do it. As well, because you're gonna have to glue it, but yeah. uh, you know, a lot of them are bolt down. But still, I mean, you yeah. you could keep extra on you, like you could have an extra yeah. basket with one in there. But even the glue ones, right? You can have you can have two extra subs. You could cook two of them in the lanes, and then pop them out, put the two extras in. Then over the next week, you know, glue those down, and then you're ready to go. I am bringing six recones to Slamology. I'm planning on sending <laughs> all six of them. If I have to, that is. Are your 
Are, are your bolts down or are they, are they, or you have to glue them? You have to glue this around and you do a bead around the spider landing stuff, but uh, gotcha. they could be done same day. That's what we were talking about right here. And someone had actually asked in the chat, I, I lost it in the chat. What was the curing? There it is. What's the curing time on the adhesive? So same day. So you could go in the morning and, and cook a woofer on a demo and then re recone that sucker and then still compete. I've had issues before trying to do it same day. Like you really need a 24 hour set time. Yes. Like, uh, but it, a lot of these SPL guys, that especially when they go crazy with the E6000 and the, and the adhesive promoter, like they'll be cooking them in the, in the same day. The the biggest problem I've had is with the CA glue and dust caps and stuff like that. Or yeah. if I, yeah. the, the dust caps give me problems, but I've never had it. I've never had a failure on spider landing or uh, <laughs> coils. Touche. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's I, SPL team. We're gonna blow the freaking subs. Who cares? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I'm literally going to hand out platefuls of demos. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just reeking like coil smell. Every every person comes in the truck. I mean, and, and Scott, SPL someone, contest is oh. not at all unlike a, um, a a drag race or a tractor pull. Yeah. Where the whole purpose is to take the equipment and push it all to the the extreme. And if it blows, it blows. That's what you have to do to win. Sometimes. Maybe closer to a demo derby. <laughs> something's going to go. <laughs> it's just a matter of what. Hey, Scott, I got a question for you. Uh, well, sure. actually, someone else has a question for you. The custom channel asked, you know, are, are you supporting other dealers or can people become dealers for you guys? Or are you guys just all right now on your own website? That's basically what you're doing. We have, we have one authorized retailer, Crush Customs. Um, but right now we are doing majority uh, direct ship only. Uh, and that's one thing too, like I'm not even paying myself on power hog right now, guys. Like uh, it's a two sided coin with the authorized retailers and the, and the dealers right now. Um, everything right now is going to ring invested back in the company to expand the product line, the same things we want to do. So right now I have to soak up, you know, most of that I can to be able to offer those products. And things like, I'm not even taking a single cent out of any of these things. Um, and once we get established where I have our mid range and full range driver line, and uh, we've got a constant flow of things. I'll be more than happy to have a lot of dealer things. And uh, there'll be something we'll have in the, in the near future, hopefully. within. A, I'm hoping for about one year's time to have all, all of our full product line where I want to have it and be already working on revisions and things along those lines. Yeah, and you guys are having trouble keeping stock as is right now, so uh, dealers would be out of the question at the moment. I think when our last time, uh, you know, there was – Pretty significant order of amplifiers from the original one. There was five 4Ks, 17500. I'm not even joking, actually, since we've started this podcast, the last 7500 just sold out. Um, and oh, you can wow. check on the website. Which, the, uh, which one of y'all bought it? That's what I want to know. Yeah. Who, who Someone here bought it. it. Yeah. They just bought it because of the cat picture, I'm telling you. The, uh, they it. could have. The, uh, I'm running two of them bad boys in the, in the Power Hog truck. And when I go back on that, I'm not doing an SPL vehicle in the Power Hog truck. Now, if I don't hit 155 on music, the first demo that I do on music on SPL meter, I'm taking it back out. Okay. But, uh, you know, I'm not shooting for numbers now. I just really wanted to have a, if I was going to shoot for numbers, I would have done a B pillar wall. I really want to focus in on doing five people demos. and just cramming the second row full of people and just windy doing stuff. I got to say too, I just looked up power hog audio on Google and the first video that's popping up is from DIY audio guy. This stream right here. Oh, very cool. Hey, yeah. I think we I get the Facebook search. page. Awesome. Nice. You, yeah. you know, I gotta I gotta interrupt real quick right here. Uh Nick, before we started the stream, you had mentioned something you wanted to announce uh with one of the drivers you'd featured on your channel. Yes. Um, what was that again? I actually had forgot about that, so thanks for reminding me. Um, Punk Kill Day. So a lot of you guys uh watch my channel and you you've learned about the Punk Kill Day drivers. They're the one that I've I've done two or three videos on. They're the new name in high fine drivers. They are unavailable to buy in the U.S. They don't have any U.S. distributors yet. I featured them like six months ago, and people have been asking me like crazy, where can I get them? They have decided that they're going to go ahead and sell directly to consumer for a limited time. It's just a pop-up sale. So if you want to uh, if you want to go ahead and purchase them, what you do is you email them directly, and they'll go ahead and let you purchase it. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll put a link down in the comments section for you guys. So that you guys know if you want to if you want to get any of those, you can. I'm not and a link sugar, but email. And uh sugar maker sixty seven, thank you for the super sticker. That was kind and generous of you. Uh, we sure appreciate those quite a bit. Yeah, for sure. Drop the twenty the twenty dollar holler on you. Yeah, yeah. We'll take that twenty dollar holler. <laughs> I can't highlight anything. I want to make one comment on, on what Wilson Audio Lab just said. He said he lives a dealer for the install portion but the multiple markups don't make sense these days. And that's one thing too, 
that a lot of people are going to take and have to go realize. For instance, right now, I genuinely feel like bang for a buck, especially on the amplifier side, we provide the, the most amount of power and clean power, reliable, you're going to get for the money. As we grow and expand and you ex expand on to, uh, for instance, the Amazon stores, if you do the, the authorized retailers and suppliers, um, that goes hand in hand of your, your overhead is going to go up and you're going to have to raise prices on things. So like uh, that's just something people to be mindful of. And I honestly probably get 20 to 30 messages about every day. I'm not even joking with you. Just ding, ding, every day on the Facebook thing, how to become a dealer. But that's definitely something I'm glad we got brought up and we'll be addressing at a later time. But uh, right now, again, we're at a really uh, financial growing point with the company. Yeah, you'll need to have the ability to uh, to get your hands on a lot of gear and, and, and ship it out in order to do that. And that's a that's a big jump right there. So Sugar Maker 67 has a follow up. He won't say uh, wants me to get on the table and dance. Uh, I'm on a standing table, so if I get on the table and dance, all you'll see is my knees. So uh, we're fine <laughs> I might with that. Do that later. We're fine with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, people got to remember every hand that touches a product adds cost to it. So every person in the line adds a little bit of cost. Might not always be much, but uh, it's but cost it's you don't think about. I mean, it goes down to. You know, for instance, the laser engraving, even things along the, the more people you're having in the process and stream of it going to customer, it, in, it translates to end user cost. The, you know, I've been a snap on dealer for seven years. That stuff is crazy, crazy nice stuff. It's made in house, but it's the, the overhead cost of doing it here. And again, in the thing on the audio, we're, we'll be growing, but we're going to do some very larger, which is, I can't really tell too much. We do have some disclosures, but we do some very larger subwoofer designs for higher end SPL competitor people. Those are going to be built, hand assembled in the U.S., but that's still a, a premium. A lot of people don't paying that they don't realize that it. You know, the way I look at it too is if if, if uh, Nick and myself, or let's say we're in two different sides of the country here, and we're using identical components, we're using identical glues, all of that jazz. And uh, if we're same skill level and we've been doing this, what is the difference of of paying the labor? You know, you're going to pass off that labor translate difference just by having it assembled here too which is pretty crazy to think about in the scheme of things. But, uh, you know, if it's the same stuff, same components, but just one, and one key thing I want to touch in on that one. A lot of people try to bring up. Yeah. Well, and at the point you you're ready for, for a lot of dealers, um, that means you're going to be ordering a lot more products. So, you know, at that point, maybe you can get the product cheap enough on your end that it doesn't affect too much, but you know, starting out, that's just, that's really not an option for a lot of people. It's still not small. You got to think about it, though. So, for instance, uh, you know, we even had our first authorized retail. They had to order it off the top, obviously. But then we have, uh, you know, it was, I can't give you an exact number, but it was close to 100 models per subwoofer, you know. And, and then uh, the amplifiers, the, you have, you're doing bulk orders on those, too. And, and But as it grows, we're going to continue to keep doing it. And I'm very excited for the future. And I'll be happy to have a lot of you guys as dealers. I mean, that's going to be a great future. But we'll see how it goes. It's a long road ahead of us, too. I'm excited. So I'm gonna I want to mention something too because Deviant Deviant for Life said hey you can sell on Amazon as well but man, Amazon is also very expensive to sell on I don't think a lot of people understand that unless unless you have like a ridiculous amount of bulk on there because they if I if I remember correctly they sell they they charge for keeping it in their warehouse assuming mm -hmm. that you want an Amazon Prime and then they <laughs> charge you for pretty much everything else it gets it gets pretty expensive pretty fast that's why like if you see like products from like parts express and stuff you'll often see them more expensive on amazon versus on their own website i mean my assumption is i don't know this for sure but my assumption is they're passing the cost because it's it's more expensive to buy on amazon well the or price is always fluctuating too though you'll see a lot of price variance from the dealers and stuff like that you'll see as far as manufacturer prices being slightly bearing the it, it translates to convenience too and in user i mean what they, what they want to do the I mean, there's a lot of manufacturers you can buy, and it's it's a two sided coin, man. Again, it's the everyone that's like Big D just said earlier, like everyone wants their cut, man. He just it's kind of funny, like as a Snap On dealer too, man. A lot of this stuff that's not Snap On brand stuff, I can literally my cost as a, a dealer is sometimes what the, the the customer can go buy it for on the street somewhere. Like you know, everyone wants their cut, man. True. Yeah, somebody somebody's got to pay for those Blue Point cable cutters. 
still, in my experience, the best cable cutters I've ever used. The blue handle ones, the, the yeah, yeah. chompy boards, the yeah, PWC eight hundred fours, I think something like that. My best cable cutters I ever bought. I'm not even, I'm not even affiliated with whatsoever. The best money I ever spent on large cable stuff was the Sky High Car Audio cable cutters and their oh, large trimmers. Oh, that's trimper. the big, like the hedge mm -hmm. trimmer style, huh? Dude, I'm telling you, that that crimper is the best yeah. investment I ever. Casey's kidnapped it from me, pretty much. It's stolen. It's not <laughs> I, I bought some new ones. We're gonna try them. You guys know Klein's, Klein's. that I love Klein. I'm a Klein fanboy. They make good tools. Yeah, these are the new ones with they have the strippers on the backside. So we'll see. We'll see. I'm gonna try them out. Uh, what what get, is that designed for? I mean, that looks big. Is that like it, one gauge or zero gauge or what? Up to to two gauge, to two gauge copper and four gauge of my favorite CCA wire. <laughs> so. Or not two gauge, two ot. And four ought. Excuse me. You know, the CCA comment, which we've all had our things on that. I had a customer or and a friend of mine at the same time, too. And he bought an app install kit. And then I kind of wanted to give one of them. I told you not to buy CCA. But at yeah. the end of the day, it was like 400 watts on a four channel. And it's in his BMW, yeah. the batteries in the trunk. I'm like, you know what, buddy? Actually, it's going to be perfectly fine. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's just a matter of, you know, if you live in Florida, probably not. But if you live where I'm landlocked, you're okay. I've have had you it done on for a couple of years now. But say, have you done an update on it lately or no? Or to even look no, at it? I, I'm going to. I, so I figure I'm going to pull. I, it's been like three months again. I want to do it like every six months. Just pull it out. And I didn't. I purposely didn't put shrink on it. Mm -hmm. I didn't put ferals. I want to put it in the worst case scenario just to see. You know, I actually I want it to corrode. To see if it's going to grow. I want it to be in the worst case scenario. And when it does, then I'll pull it out and put OFC in there. But I can't even make this up, though, man. I had a guy that I sold my, which is all in a, in a long, it's a snap on customer mine and I've been a power hog thing. I, I sold him out of an amplifier. I thought I had a four channel sold to him, which he didn't, was a position to really buy it anyway. He thought it was amp died. It's a big name brand one. And I S you not, I opened the hood and he's like, man, the amp just kind of goes on and off every once in a while. And it was like an 8 gauge CCA kit, and it was literally turned to dust. Like, I literally yeah. just, like, lopped back, like, an extra foot that never got cut off of it anyway that should have been. And she's good to yeah. go, bud. But Dean, Hey, Dean had a video where he had it, and, dude, it was literally powder. And he was he was coughing the next day. And I think it's because he opened that stupid wire up and got all that dust all, up, all in his lungs. Yeah. Well, that's yeah, Casey popping What's up, y'all? <laughs> what? so, yeah, this is Casey. What's, what's up, guys? You just snuck up, in Casey? on me. And, and who is this? Tell us who's, who uh, Casey is. Casey, my other business partner and a great friend of mine that he's over the uh, the amplifiers on Power Hog. He's the amp he's been hanging out. Yeah. Well, speaking yeah, of that, yeah. can you show us your amplifier sitting there? Which one is that? This is the this is the the prototype four channel that I sent to Vega, and we already have oh, a revision right. made on this one. But uh, she's a unit. The uh, the same one I'm rocking in the uh, old excursion now, and uh, we've got the launch edition ones. All the launch edition amps are black with white anodization heat. The heat seems coming; it's gonna be pretty insane. But uh, this is the 250 by four. Um, we made a change in the capacitors to take in that we wanted to make the previous four ohm readings. The, I'm sorry, the previous two ohm readings, the four ohm readings, and just eliminate one ohm readings. Period. Uh, yeah. We should have those. You're, are you that, saying that, that one's worth a couple hundred less because it has uh, my name on it? I'm, I'm going to cherish it for everybody. <laughs> are you no, saying that you're? Exam. Are you saying you're not going to sell them in the red? Then you're going to sell them in black? No, they'll be available. Just the the initial, the next, the large order we made of the next year's gotcha. players are are launch edition, and uh, yeah, they're black with white uh, laser engraving. It's actually pretty <laughs> impressive. What till you see them? Did you see the custom channels uh, last comment there? Pop mm -mm. that up on the screen. Custom channel. That, How far yeah, back he, was it? He's the new. He's the new winner of the uh, chat right now. Given all she's got, you know, would you you be doing a, you be doing yourself a sacrifice though? Like, who would put CCA in like nice gold terminals and everything though? Like, oh, uh, that's yeah. just pretty. Yeah. There you it's go. a lot of fusing though, too. Then, man, it's a hundred. Like you said, there's fusing. always you know people are always taking shortcuts somewhere. They got to decide where to spend their money. Someone's gonna put CCA to that. I guarantee. They'll do it. Right. They'll do it. Guarantee. The, uh, Yes, it is bridgeable. L and if, if you send it to Hi-Fi, it's definitely happened. I've got it bridged now. <laughs> yeah. I'm running that unit right now. I'm doing it two channels. I run it in three channel mode. Two channels on my front doors on two six and a half and a tweeter, and the rear two channels bridged on a, a 2005 Lightning Audio Strike VC210 subwoofer. And I have that 10 inch box 
stuck into my fourth order enclosure. So it's like a sixth, it's like a seven to eighth, I don't know, whatever crazy order it is. <laughs> the, uh, it's really loud and like two hertz, like 38 and 39. It's like the whole truck and it just falls off on both sides of it really hard. <laughs> yeah. But that's funny. That's awesome. When I get, I can't, the, when I gave the, when I was hanging out with, with Kicker, I gave him a demo and like, he, it was kind of fun. I was like, oh, I got the tin in the back. And he's like, what the crap at first? <laughs> uh, you know, it's a bass mechanic. You got to play those older songs that have the higher bass notes in them, you know, because uh, yeah. we ain't doing no 20s with that. <laughs> oh, man. Well, gentlemen, we uh, were coming up on an hour. And so, um, it, it was anybody have anything they want to talk about before we wrap things up? Well, Hi Fi, do you have any? What do you know what you're. Yeah. Are you going to say what's going to happen next week? Do you know what's happening next week or what? Oh, yeah. Well, the one, the only, Big D is going to be on woo woo. Sound Advice. For my, for my last show, I figured who better to be on it. He never got to be on it up until this point, so might as well be on it with me on my last show. It'll be fun. Awesome. Excellent. I do have something to pimp. Yeah, it would also be cool if you got yeah. Derek on with him. No, <laughs> Derek doesn't exist. You need oh, to do dude. an interview with a newscaster mm. for the uh, Dick Hercules. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Justin, can you share that? I got it. Here? Yeah. All oh, right, so hey. Check it out. I read down all my merch. Oh, nice. And, and I've I've changed it up a little bit here. This one's specifically for Wire It to the Dirt. That's a that's a high five classic saying right there. And I've got a few things. You know, I've got a copy cup. It's your boy. Can I, can I make one comment? Yeah. I was literally gonna like plug you, which I didn't want to see where he was gonna do wire for the shirt. If you had a it's your boy like sticker shirt when I would have bought that. But it wasn't yeah. it's your boy one. You need to pick that that stick or just throw it on the shirt. I'll buy one. All right, there you go. Oh, oh wait, wait up. I think I no, I didn't have that. No, I don't. No. no. Yeah, that's it, man. That's what I got to pin. And, oh, and Kip's gonna be on Twelve E Talk Wednesday. Nice. Should be a good one. Awesome. Right, That'll work. Scott, Nick, what you, you got? You got Scott, you got what a, you got? What you guys? You want to? What do you think yeah. of before you go? So I've got the uh, we've got the Rolling Thunder podcast. I'm talking with Casey, the guy that stepped in earlier, and uh, we're gonna kick that up on Friday. It's gonna be another audio and cardio gaming movie and whatever we decided to, to make the talking point that night. And uh, that's gonna be cool. We do it on Friday evenings. I'm trying not to step on anybody's toes and that stuff, but we've honestly been talking about it for a while. You have no idea how many times it's the same thing. We'll have a conversation point. And we'll just sit downstairs or something like that and just ramble for an hour and a half. You're like, dude, if we had that down, like that would have been good. But uh, we got that. I am crunching hours on doing not only friends and customer installs on the side, but knocking out the 615 and installing the PowerHog demo vehicle. We've got the uh, PowerHog uh, headquarters uh, grand opening party the 29th of, uh, of this month, and uh, I'm trying to crunch in getting my surgeon at least playing by then. I'm not going to have it fully trimmed out by then, but it's going to be exciting. And if you guys are anywhere near the Georgia area, I'd like to happily have you guys on, on that Sunday. Come check yeah. out the headquarters. That would be cool. But uh, other than that, it's just slinging tools, the normal route of that. But uh, And I do genuinely appreciate you guys having me, and I appreciate your time. And it was, I had a, a good time doing it with you gentlemen tonight. It was a, it was a fun experience. Oh, yeah. Well, we had, we had fun with you all the time. Uh, well, that doesn't sound right. Um, yeah, we're, <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> we, we're, we're having 20, fun tonight. I don't know. Dude. We enjoyed you same. having you on. Yes, yes. Um, this is a family I, friendly show, Nick. Come on. We're not on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, back to. So I got some cool things going on. I just finished my uh, CSS SDX 12 uh, build, which has dual passive radiators. If you want to see it, check out my Instagram. It's on there, Toyd's DIY Audio underscore on between the things. Um, I got a picture of that up. I might get a picture on the community page sometime, but uh, that's where it is right now. It's also on my Facebook page. So if you want to take a look at that, this thing is awesome. I, I got a lot of good things to say about this for home theater use. Very, very nice. Probably one of the best, maybe right now off the top of my head, I think it's the best sounding 12 inch subwoofer. I'll give it some more thought before I do the review that I've, that I've heard myself. Um, I'm still working on the guitar amplifier. That thing has given me so much trouble. I'm not even going to lie. I've had to remake parts like six parts for the thing. I don't know. I'm not very good at making guitar amplifiers, I guess. But uh, <laughs> I mean, it's it's my first try, so uh, you know, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. And and I have uh, Cartesian coming up. I'm cutting those out in the CNC as we speak. Awesome. 
Well, I don't have anything that that's big coming up. I spent the last couple of weeks doing some shop organization, which doesn't make for good YouTube videos. Where I'm assuming it doesn't. I don't know. Do y'all want to watch me put stuff in a Home Depot tub? I, I can't imagine that's going to be entertaining. But I do have a video coming up next week. I made a router jig for cutting grooves and designs Ooh. in in a um, in a baffle, and that video is already up for my patrons, or it's it's already uploaded, and I think it goes live for my patrons maybe tomorrow. I think. And so that'll that'll launch over the next coming weekend. And the next thing I'm going to be working on is one of my one of my most popular videos to date has been the video where I just grabbed some images off Amazon and tried to explain which prefab boxes were terrible and you should never buy, and which ones were slightly better and maybe you should consider if you swear you have to go with a prefab. And I've ordered one of the cheap prefab boxes, and I'm going to. Um, tear that box to pieces any way I possibly can and just see how it goes on film. I haven't filmed that part yet. We'll see how it goes. I'd like to see the if you can take any kind of measurements on the enclosure and see how actually how close rated they are to what the specs yeah. are. Yeah, you should check out your the tuning, especially with their yeah, I've already so I've already measured it and and guesstimated the tuning with my tuning calculator that I provide for my patrons. And I mean we're talking about I think it's tuned to 50 hertz. Yeah. Have you checked yeah. it with with that? that like, I like haven't yet. I was I was I was hooking up a speaker to it before the show tonight and had to run up here and do this. And I was going to try to get the DATS going tonight, but probably won't. But I'll do a I'll do a DATS, and I, with a little bit of luck, I'll get room equalization wizard in my. I got a measurement mic back here hooked up, and even do a little measurement down in the garage. We'll see how it goes. My my hope is it sounds like crap, so I can say, "See, I told you so." But what if it sounds great? Then what? <laughs> Mm-hmm. I'm gonna my VC2 is in a Q Logic box I got for like 50 bucks at a local car audio shop, and believe it or not, I think it just sounds amazing. And just give it the beans. Yeah. Q so Logic is decent. Q Bomb, horrible. Yeah. Well, I, I guess Justin, if if uh, YouTube doesn't work out, everyone else wants you to come and just organize their shops account. for them. Right. Yep. Oh, I don't think they're paying right. though. Don't think I'm using. <laughs> I'm using all of my scrap uh, uh, three-quarter inch plywood to make uh, to make French cleats on the wall, so I can get some stuff off the off the ground. I guess just stuff sitting on the ground it gets in the way in videos. Right now, you need to use someone else's three-quarter inch scraps because it's yeah. too expensive to use your own. Yeah, yeah. That's why I didn't go out and buy new stuff. I was <laughs> let's see if I can make some scrap work instead of buying a sheet and cutting it down. So I had a mountain of pallets at the Snap-on warehouse, and I'm like, man, I should break this down and sell it right now. <laughs> yeah, he's just waiting gold. <laughs> Probably is. Uh, all right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, well, all right, guys. <laughs> There's probably not any ladies here. It is time for us to to wrap it up. And thank you all so much for watching. It's been real. It's been fun. I'm going to hit the broadcast button, and it takes two or three seconds.